Hi, this video introduces Bartlett and Goshel and um, looks at the international strategy. I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce Goshel or Goshel. Um, I'm going to go with Goshel and I hope that uh, I don't offend anyone. <clears throat> so this uh, is the first in a series of videos looking at uh, the pressure for local responsiveness and pressures for cost reduction and how Bartlett and Goshel have put that together. So the model that Bartlett and Goshel have put together is a um, grid that basically outlines the strategies for, for operating a multinational company based on the pressure for local responsiveness and the pressure for managing costs. So like many of these things, it's a, a grid that I'll have a look at in just a moment. <clears throat> but the pressure for local responsiveness refers to what extent the product needs to be customised to adapt to local taste. So, so can you sell a generic product in the UK, the US, uh, China, India? Does it, can it be um, just uniform standard across those uh, different countries or does it need to be specialised in order to appeal to the customers in that market? The second factor is the pressure to reduce local, to, the pressure to reduce costs, which is sometimes talk, called global integration, managing global supply chains, and it's basically this looks at to what extent the organisation needs to exploit economies of scale in order to gain a competitive advantage. So, do we need to set a really low price in order to gain a competitive advantage, and do we need to adapt the product for local markets? So the pressure for local responsiveness tends to be high when there are large cultural differences between the countries and an and MNC operates in and therefore the products might need to be adapted. Uh, if there are differences in infrastructure, in the business operations and distribution networks between countries that may require um, some degree of specialising in terms of how we produce the product or manufacture it. Or maybe there are different regulations regarding ownership, the product itself or production method. So uh, a famous example used to be, um, I think it was in Sweden, that cars were required to have their lights on at all times. Um, and so if you were producing a car overseas, you'd have to slightly alter your product so it's specialised for that market. Um, Pressures for cost reduction are going to be high if the products are not differentiated and price is the unique selling point. So when the products are standardised and uniform uh, and price is the most important thing. Uh, if competitors can produce products more cheaply and in highly competitive markets. These were all factors that would uh, create a pressure for reducing costs. So I'm not going to look at all of these in one video. I'm just going to focus on the international strategy um, and an international strategy this is what the whole model looks like the international strategy is when there's low cost pressure and low pressure for local responsiveness so when demand for products this would be a good strategy to follow when demand for products is similar to the multinational company's home market and there's little pressure for lowering average production costs. So demand tends to be, if demand would be relatively similar and we don't uh, really need to specialise for lower production costs. Um, when product development and research and uh, design, uh, research and development decisions can be centralised. So uh, we will often uh, look at developing a uh, single product, um, but we could decentralise other decision making like HR, like who's going to be running the branches, who's going to uh, be timetable. It wouldn't make any sense to make those decisions centrally, um, and marketing decisions as well could be decentralised. Uh, but mostly the production decisions are going to be made centrally, and local branches are going to implement centrally made decisions. Um, an example of a company that may follow an international strategy might be Dunkin Donuts. So if you think about Dunkin Donuts, the product is fairly uh, kind of standardised across every country that you get Dunkin Donuts in. I'm not saying there aren't the odd uh, kind of products that may be appropriate for a particular market, but donuts are donuts um, and coffee is coffee and they're relatively similar across the market. So there's low response pressure for local responsiveness. 
in terms of the global integration, it may be very difficult for Dunkin' Donuts, well, it's going to be extremely dun uh, difficult for Dunkin' Donuts to produce centrally. Dunkin' Donuts is an American company. wouldn't make any sense to make a bunch of donuts in a big factory in the middle of America and then ship them all over the world to like the Middle East where there's branches because the donuts are going to go off. So it's very difficult to integrate the global production. So therefore, we need to have local suppliers, uh, local market, and... Um, there's relatively low pressure to integrate the global supply chain because it's impossible. So um, I have put Dunkin' Donuts there as an example of a business that might follow an international strategy.